Here are the 10 most common reasons why people fail the UK driving test. Number one, which is normally number one most years, is observations at junctions. And if you fail because of observations at junctions, that basically means you haven't taken enough care to look to see who's coming before you've gone. Normally this happens because you're coming into the junction too fast and as you're coming in too quickly, you haven't given yourself enough time to look left or right or both. Or it could just be that the junction has poor visibility and you can't see very well and you've set off without edging forward slightly to improve your view. You could also fail for observations at junctions if you decide to pull out in front of somebody. So if you can see someone is coming and you decide to go and you make them break, depending on how much you make them break, that could be a driver fault or a serious driver fault. If it's a serious driver fault because you've made them break a lot, you will fail. If you've only made them break a little bit, you will most likely still pass unless you repeatedly do that. Whether or not you do fail for making someone break comes down to the examiner. It's up to them to decide how much you made that car break. If they think you've made them break too much, they will fail you. But if they think that it wasn't too much of a problem or it wasn't too unsafe, they will still pass you. Also, if someone has to break for you, but you couldn't see them coming when you set off, that's not your fault. They can't fail you for that. For example, let's say you're at a T-junction and that T-junction has a sharp bend further down the road. And as you start to go, no one's coming. So you've decided to go when no one's coming. But after you start, someone comes flying around the bend really quickly and then they have to brake for you. Well, there's nothing you can do about that. So don't worry, the car just needs to slow down. You won't fail for that. And another reason that causes people to fail for their observations at junctions is just their observations getting old. So the person driving on the test looks left and right to see if it's safe to go. And then they stop looking left and right and they take a while to get moving. Their looks get old, the situation changes and it was no longer safe. And even if it was still safe, if the examiner can see you haven't looked for a long time, they may still fail you because they're aware of where you're looking and they know if there was someone coming, it would have been a problem. And number two, the second most common reason for failing the UK driving test, and that is checking your mirrors for changing your direction. So if you're gonna turn to the left, you should check your center and left mirror before you turn. And if you're gonna turn to the right, you should check your center and right mirror before you turn or go to the right. Most of the time, not checking your mirrors before you change your direction is just a minor fault or a driving fault. In the older days, we used to call them minors. Now the DVSA just like us to call them driver faults. I still call them minors because they are kind of like a more minor fault. And they used to be majors, but we call majors serious now. But you don't fail for getting a driver fault. It has to be a serious driver fault. However, if you went through the test, rarely ever checking your mirrors, you're gonna be getting quite a few driver faults. And normally they'll only let a maximum of five go in one particular area. So if you don't check your center right mirror before moving out to go around parked cars, say five times, they would probably fail you for that. However, you could actually fail for missing the mirrors once if it was a really important mirror check. For example, you're on a dual carriageway, you're in the left lane and you wanna to move to lane two and you change lane without checking your mirrors. That is a serious driver fault and you will fail for that. The third most common reason for failing the UK driving test is steering control. So there's quite a few ways you can fail the driving test for how you use the steering wheel. It's not so much normally to do with how you actually use the wheel though. You don't have to keep your hands at 10 to two to pass the driving test. If your hands are a little bit different, they're not gonna fail you. You are supposed to keep both hands on the wheel where possible. So if there was a small amount of time, I don't know, depends on the examiner really, 30 seconds say where you're driving like this with your hand on the gear stick and the other hand on the wheel, they're probably gonna give you a driver fault or a minor driver fault. 
if that went on through long periods of time throughout most of the tests, they're most likely gonna fail you for only having one hand on the wheel. You could also fail for having poor control of the steering wheel when you turn it. So if you're turning it and your hands are getting twisted like this and you're struggling to continue turning the wheel and as a result, the car doesn't make the turn, you will fail for that too. You don't have to use the push-pull technique, which is, let's turn my engine on, take my handbrake off so I can turn the wheel without putting too much strain on it. This is the push-pull technique. You don't have to do that to pass the driving test. If you cross your arms over a little bit, you're not gonna fail for that. Once upon a time, maybe, but I've been doing the job for 11 years now, and that's certainly before my time, even when I passed my test in 2004. You didn't have to do that, it's just recommended. Although I do recommend avoiding crossing your hand over the wheel too much because that airbag goes off. That's gonna cause you some damage. It's 120 mile an hour impact, your wrist into your head, especially if you've got a watch on, that's gonna hurt. The wax on, wax off method isn't acceptable. Not least because you're only ever using one hand, but you're not gripping the wheel. So if you hit a hole in the road and the steering wheel jars to one side, you haven't got grip of that wheel. Also, don't let go of the wheel to let itself straighten, because again, you're not holding the wheel and you need to have enough control over your steering wheel so that you are always telling the car exactly where to go. It's not telling you where to go. But as I said earlier, how you use the wheel isn't actually normally the cause for the serious driver fault, the third most likely reason people fail the driving test in the UK. They also mark that box, that steering control box, because you fail to maintain proper positioning when you're doing a turn. And they mark that down as steering. So if you've got a difficult left bend to make, or at the end of the road you're turning left, and you start turning to go around the bend, but you don't steer enough, and you end up going really wide around the bend, possibly onto the other side of the road, they mark that as steering control because they think the reason why you've gone onto the wrong side of the road is because of your lack of control over the wheel as opposed to your lack of perception of where you should be. In my experience, that's normally the reason why people get that serious mark of steering control. The fourth most common reason people fail the driving test is turning right at junctions. When a driving examiner marks a driving test, they have a section for junctions, and in that section there is observations, which I've already mentioned as number one, that's the first most common reason people fail the UK driving test. They also have um, turning left, turning right, and I can't think now, What's the other one they have? Approach speed, that's it, approach speed. So they're the different boxes they can tick. So if you fail for junctions turning right, it's not gonna be because your approach speed is wrong, because they have a different box for that. It's not gonna be because your observations were wrong. Again, they have a different box for that. It's gonna be something specific about turning right. In my experience, the reason why people normally fail for turning right or junctions turning right, they get that box ticked, is more to do with their position. So they don't use the box in the middle very well when you're turning right, that waiting area you get when you're waiting to turn right, or they wait too far forwards, which means it's very difficult to get into your road and you might have to swan neck or possibly get close to hitting or even hit the curb. They wait too early, which is misleading because if you wait too early, people in the side road that you're turning into are gonna think you're giving way and that's gonna encourage them to pull out in front of you, which causes danger. Sometimes people fail for this one when they wait too far to the right. So they actually wait in the wrong side of the road for oncoming cars, which of course means you're waiting in the way. And another thing that can be a problem is when you decide to turn right, there's pedestrians crossing the road you're turning into and you end up stopping blocking the main road. That's not where you wanna be waiting. And one last thing I can currently think of is waiting too much to the left. Again, it's all about position. So if you're turning right, but you position yourself to the left of the road, people are gonna get confused. It's gonna be very misleading. People might even be tempted to overtake you as you're turning right, because it looks like you're parked. You've waited over to the left. That looks like you've parked. Someone behind wants to overtake you, just as you want to turn right. 
that's not very safe. You don't want to be given the impression that you're parking when you're planning to turn right. And the fifth most common reason why people fail the UK driving test is move off safely. And that's pretty much always gonna be because of one of two things. The first thing being ineffective observations. So you're not checking around properly before you move away. You don't check your blind spot. You only get a minor if you don't check your blind spot, unless there's someone currently there, then it would be a serious. But if you don't check your blind spot multiple times, that would become a serious fault or a fail anyway. And the other main reason why people fail for move off safely is simply because of poor decisions. So they think they can make it before the car behind is well catches up with them. They go to move away and the car behind has to break. All their observations get old. They think, oh yeah, they look far away. By the time they get moving, the car behind is actually quite close now and, and has had to break for them. But also it's not just cars behind, it's cars in front that causes this problem too. And that's probably one of the more likely reasons because you're not expecting it as much. If you've got a parked car in front of you and you've got to do the angle start when you move away when there's a car in front of you, you've got to go onto the other side of the road. So you need to think about people coming towards you as well as people coming from behind you. If you don't have a parked car in front of you, but oncoming cars are currently using your side of the road, you're not driving, you're not in play, you're parked. So you should give them priority first. You can't drive at them and make them slam on the brakes. You've got to let them pass the parked cars first and get back to the side of the road or wait until no one's coming before you set off. Now for the sixth most common reason, and that is response to traffic lights. It could be quite easy. There's many reasons why you could fail for not responding to traffic lights properly. I think the most likely reason is the lights go amber when you're too close and you slam on the brakes too sharply when you should have probably carried on. Or the opposite, you the lights go amber when you think you don't have time to stop but you do and you end up going over a red light or the examiner has to use the brake to stop you going over a red light. One that you probably don't expect but this happens more than you might probably think and that is stopping at a green light because if you're at traffic lights and you're getting bored and you start looking around you're not gonna notice it go green and you'll be surprised how often that happens. And if you're waiting at a green light, that is a driving test fail. Another reason for failing your test because of traffic lights is when you're turning right at traffic lights. When you're turning right at traffic lights, hopefully you know that you need to wait in the middle. If you've got a green light and you're turning right, you need to wait in the middle of the junction for oncoming cars because you're using their side of the road and traffic lights work in pairs and they've got a green light at the same time as you. But if you've got a green arrow to the right, the oncoming cars are gonna have a red light, therefore you can go. So if you're waiting in the middle with a green arrow, you would also fail because of, in effect, you're waiting at a green light again. And the seventh most common reason is move off control. Number five was move off safely. That's about observations and making sure you don't make anyone break and then move off control is how you deal with the car when you move away. Does the car roll back um, during the angle start? Do you shoot forwards and nearly hit the car in front? It's quite simple that one really. Do you move away with good control or does the car roll back or shoot forwards out of control? If you fail for move off control, it was most likely because you were on a hill and you rolled back too much. I say too much because the examiners do have a bit of tolerance for how much you roll back. How much they will allow you to roll back before they fail you is completely down to them. They, if they feel how much you rolled back was unsafe, they'll fail you. If they feel it wasn't very significant and is not gonna cause you much trouble at all in your driving life, then they'll still pass you. Number eight, it's getting dark, so I need to get this video wrapped up, and that is positioning normal driving, positioning, normal driving. So that means you have a bad position when you're driving down the road. Normally, new drivers tend to be too much to the left or they give oncoming cars too much space. Rarely, they're too much to the right and they're getting too close to oncoming cars, although that can happen. When you're dealing with narrow roads, try and take 50% of your gap when there's a car coming the other way. 
if it is a very narrow road and there's no one coming the other way, don't try and take 50% of the gap because that might have you in the hedge slightly on a narrow country road. Take as much space as you need until someone comes the other way, then slow down and then try and half the road, use half each and squeeze through at a lower speed, especially if you're very near the bush. You don't want to be brushing up against branches and damaging your paintwork, maybe even stop. Actually, I just watched that back, that clip, and I said 50% of the gap. That might be a bit misleading. 50% of the road. So it's a narrow road, you take half, you give the oncoming car the other half. If it's a really big car or a big truck, maybe a bus, then you might have to give them a little bit more. But work together and try and be fair. Number nine, nine, that was 10, that's nine. Response to signals, road marking. That's how it's written on the form. Response to signals or response to, yeah, just response to signals, road markings from my memory. And that basically means you haven't responded to a road marking. Let's say there's a give way line and you haven't noticed it. I think that's one of the most important parts of learning to drive is to learn to read and follow the road. You shouldn't be looking at air. You should be looking mostly at road because that's where most of the information is the signs as well, but you need to know where your give way lines are, especially at crossroads. If you're to go across a crossroads without noticing that you need to give way, that could be quite dangerous. But basically you will fail if your response to road markings is either unsafe or illegal. So if not responding to those road markings means your driving is illegal or unsafe, you will fail for response to signals, road markings. And the 10th most common reason you may fail the UK driving test, reverse park, control. And what they mean by control is, is lack of accuracy or lack of control, both. They don't have an accuracy box, so there's put accuracy under control. You could hit the curb quite hard. If you touch the curb a little bit, they'll probably let you off. Maybe roll down the hill the wrong way more than you want to, or just not finish the manoeuvre properly. That's why you'll fail for reverse park control. In the statistics, they don't specify what reverse park they're talking about. They don't say whether it's car park or road, which to you and me is bay parking for the car park, like at a supermarket or any kind of car park, and parallel parking for the road where you park alongside the curb. But another reason you could fail for reverse park is observations. It's different to control. It doesn't make the top 10 list, but I would not be surprised if it's number 11 or number 12 or 13 maybe, because a lot of people fail during the reverse park for not taking effective observations and making sure it's safe to go backwards. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. So there's your top 10. Really is getting dark now. Just about see me there. If you think it helps, give me a like and subscribe to get my future videos. Until the next one, cheerio.